Hi, Amy. I made it to Madagascar and I've rented a bungalow in Tuliar. Already seen my first wildlife. Ah. As a rule, Fucking Christ. everything I have to kill in my room will be retroactively classified, not an endangered species. I have my own bathroom, which is great. Well, my own shower, at any rate. You know how at home you have to wait a couple of minutes for the water to get hot after you turn on the spigot? Well, here you don't have to bother. It's always the same temperature. So that's great. Although the window makes me apprehensive because the proprietor's daughters have a habit of pushing open the shutters and popping their heads in. We have interesting conversations. Yes, I'm a civilian. Civilian? Civilian. 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 Because they don't meet a lot of Americans here, I feel representative in a way. And it's incumbent upon me, therefore, to never shout, Can you leave me in peace for one god minute? Because holy shit, you're driving me out of my fing mind with the fing window bullshit. After 11 days at sea, the ground feels pleasantly solid. Almost everyone arrives in Madagascar via Antananarivo, and by disembarking in Tuliar, I feel as if I've come through the back door, as if I'm in Madagascar's kitchen. You ruined it. It's a dusty place. I sat down to a plate of rice, and by the end of the meal, my notebook had a thin layer of dust on it, which means I ate dust. Staying next to a meat market that's very interesting. Refrigeration isn't common, so people shop every day. Everything's fresh. Oh. I met a couple butchers who invited me to their football game because I may have told them that I'm a great football player. I'm actually not sure what I said. All along I've been practicing French with flashcards, but now that I'm here I feel like a prick speaking the language of the conqueror. I'm trying to learn some Malagasy, but invariably I end up speaking a confusing soup of tongues. Ratsirak. Let's do this. I tried to trade a sweater for a t-shirt of someone called Didier Ratsirak. Yeah. Barely managed it. This is a long verb. Manao varotra fi fanan kalozana. Namishikado fanakalozana. Wait, wait, wait. Namishikado. Manao vi varotra. Here, look right here. <laughs> any, any, any. I thought we were going to trade. It wouldn't be the first time I've tried to make a trade. He's still wearing the shirt. <laughs> and just ended up giving a gift. It's a little hot today for a sweater. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> With better language skills, I might understand why people keep warning me about wearing the t-shirt. Ah, we oui, oui. mm -hmm. But the t-shirt? Is it illegal? Mm -hmm. It's possible that I'm not totally in sympathy with the policies of Ratsirak's party, Arima. Ah. Are you saying I should take it off? All right, Miss Altra. That's good advice. It's hard to say sometimes if my ignorance endangers me or exempts me from danger under a sort of international protection of imbeciles clause. Time will tell. What did you ask? What word? Telephone. 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 Tao. 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 Tao.
fell out. Fear. 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 What do you fear? Do I fear? Uh, not right no. now. Have you had Dylan. Tazo? No? No. Tazo? Uh, Tazo. Oui. Là tu vois Tazo, ça fait avec euh, Marwan. Marwan, <laughs> c'est bon avec les goûter. I asked the butchers about malaria, and Clement said he was protected by all the marijuana he smoked. I thought I'd been invited to play, but it turned out they only wanted to use my watch. They needed to keep time. I think Clement realized I was disappointed. In his consolation, he may or may not have promised to bring me over some morning to watch him slaughter hogs. What? Ah. Yeah, good idea. Although, I wish it hadn't touched the lip. Oh, I think I came in hot. My plan now is to pick a place on the map at random and go there. That worked pretty well in Lesotho. So I've decided on a town called Kilimash, which, if I understand Malagasy properly, means kill the foreigner. Wait a second. Uh, Didn't you go? Cow. Go. Yes, go. Antonio, but uh, like taxi Bruce, taxi Bruce, and then ox cart. Taxi Bruce. Uh, taxi Bruce. To Andranovuri. Uh -huh. To. Enje. No Enje. Uh -huh. But Ejeda. Okay. Ejeda. Ejeda. This is not correct. Mm. Huh? That's not good. Uh, Before leaving town, I'm going to try to get this in the mail to you. Manona. I'm including a drawing of the bungalow where I'm staying. Okay, Shaq. I'm really sorry I can't be there for your birthday. Love, Matt. Are you married? No. Nobody. Nobody? Nobody. <laughs> if I'm gonna buy the baby at home. What? My guess. If I'm gonna buy the baby at happened to be in the same building as the television station, and finding the mail window closed for lunch, I wandered down the hall and through an open door. This stage in Mark's car is, uh, I dare to say it, but it's uh, poor. You see? <laughs> yes. There is not enough matter over here. Well, it's, yeah. 
just one computer, one uh, camera. Now there are two cameras. Do this. This is not belong to state, but belong to Honoré. Can't you ask the state for more equipment? Yes, we have just asked that. <laughs> Bad plan. They didn't give me until now. Yes, it's not bon. enough. C'est bon. No, but look, you've got a camera, yes, and a microphone, oh, and a computer. We don't have a microphone. That doesn't work. <laughs> so you can say in the leadership on your country that uh, we need more. Leaders. You want me to tell my leadership that Madagascar needs a microphone? Not Madagascar, but the Tulios State Studio. <laughs> you too. Okay. You want to go get a drink or something? <laughs> yes, of course. At dinner tonight, the reporters told me something very interesting. The American ambassador is coming to Tulare tomorrow. Yes. And you're going to go with your camera. Yes. He. The cameraman. He's the cameraman. Cameraman. <laughs> yes. He wants to. But you don't know why the ambassador is coming. Not at this time, maybe for tomorrow. So you will document him, and I will document you. <laughs> I plan to leave in the morning for Kilimanj, but now I think I'll stick around for at least another day. C'est bon. Do it again. Why you are coming yesterday? You are looking for a post. <laughs> Pasti, pastira, pasitra, pasi, pausitra. Oui, oui. Yeah. Accident. Why is the ambassador here? I don't know. I don't know. You don't know. But we will know after 10 minutes. <laughs> when the ambassador comes, he will tell you why he's here. Yes. He has a duty to tell the reason why he's coming here. He should tell you before he comes. He should say, I'm coming for yes. this yes. reason. Um, you took the, the authority here in Tulia. Yes. Maybe, but. Wait, that's uh, at this time. Well, hopefully he will, he will tell you before he leaves. I've hardly seen any Western travelers since arriving in Tulear, until I arrived at the airport where there were only Western travelers. Do you resent the Vazaha at all? No, they, <laughs> they participate. Uh, on the development of the, our country, our Chilea, for example, they are coming here to do something good here in Chilea, to do something good. You see, uh, the, the economic tourism. But you know, the Vizaha come to Chilea and they stay at the big hotels and at the resorts. Vizaha own the hotels mm -hmm. and Vizaha stay at the hotels. Ah, so how do the Vazaha benefit the Malagash economically? Ah, it's difficult to explain. I'm not an economist to explain it. <laughs> yes, but uh, I don't know it. The the implantation of the hotel in Madagascar. Somewhere there is a way that the Malagasid get benefits from this hotel. Trickle down. <laughs> yeah, we discredited that, actually. The ambassador has inspired up this plan. The the chief of region and the... I don't know anymore. That's terrible hair. The Zaha. I was struck by the fact that there was no security. I could easily have hit the ambassador with a plate of rice if I'd had one. Good morning. 
has to great in Madagascar in America. He has to great. He should say mana wana, not good money. <laughs> It became evident that he didn't speak Malagasy, and maybe not even French. Peace Corps workers learned the local language. Even Mormon missionaries deigned to learn the language. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to Thank you so much. It's a pleasure for me to be here today. I'm looking forward to seeing your lovely city. I've heard so much about Tudia. I understand it's one of the most beautiful cities in all of Madagascar. I think what we're doing here this morning, opening up the trafficking in persons issue here at Tudia, is very important for what we in the United States government want to do here in Madagascar. So thank you all very much. Merci. And you'd think that if one always repeated the same platitude, one might just as well memorize it. Provided one could remember to change the name of the town each time. What is your impression about it? He does not speak Malagash or French. Yes, even he is in Tuliar. Everyone rushed to their cars and left the airport in a long motorcade. As we pulled out, an old man rose from where he was bathing himself in a shallow puddle to watch the motorcade pass, completely nude and covering his genitals with his hands. I hope the ambassador saw him. And why was there no translation? I don't know. Some of our authorities doesn't understand what he said. <laughs> yes. You see? They didn't say even one word. <laughs> Kate followed the ambassador's car to a hotel. <laughs> but it turned out that he was just checking in before heading to a second hotel. So the motorcade reassembled and followed. We're launching a program yeah. dealing with human trafficking. Is there a human trafficking here in Turia? I don't know. Is there? That's a good question that we have. <laughs> To ask that. Mm, sounds good. Let's start. itself in diverse ways and is today a subject of concern for all countries world over. The United States government has made fighting trafficking in persons one of its highest priorities and has pledged over 400,000 U.S. dollars to help Madagascar in this fight. A number of things struck me about the press conference. One, the ease with which I was able to crash it. Two, my embarrassment at being the only person wearing a baseball shirt. And three, that I felt as if I were looking at a reflection of myself in Madagascar, ignorant of the language, and yet tolerated from a mix of genuine hospitality, need for American wealth, and servility to American power. I couldn't help sympathizing with the ambassador. We were in a similar position. And I sensed that the important thing, for him as well as me, was not to betray the Malagasy's tolerance by doing or saying anything obnoxious. So when the journalists very naturally asked him what specifically the U.S. was going to do about trafficking, I was surprised when he answered, let me turn this around on the journalists. After hearing this presentation today, what do you plan to do to assist in spreading the word about this major problem that we have in Madagascar? Which just seemed to tick everyone off. 
Thank you. I, I don't want to turn this into a debate on on the media. This is really the trafficking in persons debate. There is no traffic in like a long time ago, put it in the bones. Yeah. Look, there is no anymore like at this time. But a new form of the traffic is uh, what is the form? Sexual exploitation. But aren't the people who are exploiting the Malagash girls? Isn't that the white tourists? Yes. So, so America is committing money to prevent Americans from abusing Malagash. America is committing itself to stopping itself from exploiting you. <laughs> I see. Maybe the U.S. is genuinely concerned about sex trafficking in Madagascar. One doesn't want to be cynical. And so maybe it is only a coincidence that immediately after the press conference, after the local dignitaries had enjoyed the buffet, the ambassador went to the harbor to investigate its suitability for American shipping. I think it certainly is true that Western travelers treat poor countries as their playgrounds and the local people as playthings. That one right there. And those people are so broke that it's no wonder they play along. How do you tell somebody who has no money to to not take this this no, it's money? It's not a question of telling somebody to not take the money. Uh -huh. It's a question of giving alternatives yeah, yeah. to prostitution, to uh, forced labor, uh -huh. whatever that might be. I mean, the real problem is the poverty. If you look at any problem, especially in Africa, the root of the problem is poverty. If one were cynical. One might think that Western countries care only about their own needs and treat smaller countries as their larder. And while they may use a pleasant whitewash for what they're doing, no one could stop them. So the people and politicians merely scramble for whatever is left. That is what I might think if I were cynical. Is there a room, etc., uh, okay. for which I would be happy to pay? Uh, happy to pay. And you are going to sing here. Because you uh, write it, <laughs> not to me, but you. Uh, I see. <laughs> okay.
farafatsy, antsakay, sifaky, sifaky, kilimas. How do I do that? In auto, moto, in moto, moto. Okay. We must wait for my father. Say bon. In Ajeda, I met a kid who said his dad had a dirt bike because he was the school superintendent. We are afraid of you because we don't see a person Vaza. They think that you are I am what? I am going I'm going to kill them? Yes. What is the problem? The family wasn't as concerned about how I would get to Kilimash so much as how I would return. I think there will be people coming from Kilimasi to the market in Edzeda. You get uh, on? Uh, and I will ride with them in their, in their car. It's strange how I didn't really listen to what they were trying to tell me or ask myself, why does a superintendent need a dirt bike? At some point I remembered, on a map, green indicates elevation. It does not mean a place is lush. Fucking moron. Shifak was literally the end of the road. I would have to walk from there. We were given thin coffee, two spoons, and a bowl of plain rice. Someone went to fetch the chief. <laughs> I don't know what was said. Some sort of explanation occurred, although the superintendent himself wasn't sure what I was doing. So what could he have told the chief? The upshot was that I was allowed to stay. We took photos and then the superintendent left. His pristine bike was a complete mess. You get parts of Madagascar where the people are so gebietsgebonden. Um, uh, territorial, uh -huh. very territorial. And if you actually go into the territory, but you'll but you'll never go there. It's like what do you mean? I, it's that's the kind of places I was. No, but they kill you if you go into the territory. <laughs> No, I'm serious. Shifak appears to be a loose confederation of huts. Clusters of them occur at some distance from one another, apparently arranged around families. I wasn't really sure what the plan was. I expected to be pointed in the direction of Kilimash and set off when the weather cooled. But Javier seemed in no hurry. Or he thought I was in no hurry. It was a little awkward, and I tried to think of something to say. Photographia as a father? Did you not have room? Hello. You ready? Moment. This is Alta. I took a picture of one of the families we visited, and the effect when I displayed the result was good. So thereafter, Javier took me to all the distant huts for that purpose. <laughs> Tell me when. But I could never tell if we were taking photos because they wanted to have their photos taken, or because they thought I wanted to take their photos.
it's quite possible that neither they nor I wanted to take photos. <laughs> Ah, yeah, kill the machine, can I What? Finally, we retrieved my pack, and I was pleased that now I'd be on my way to Kilimanjaro. Instead, we went to another hut where I was given more rice. At some point, I realized I wasn't going to Kilimash today. You did it better than I did. Do go fast, Javier gave me some kind of succulent root tonight that was surprisingly tasty and sweet. Mm. Eh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Relative to plain rice, anything that has the slightest flavor becomes delicious. I found myself craving the thin coffee I'm sometimes served because they put a tiny bit of sugar in it, and it thereby becomes a luxurious treat. Matio, no anarco. Matian, Matio tangaran. In the morning, a woman appeared with a chicken and offered to kill it for me. I absolved the chicken. It's worth asking, why am I intent on reaching Kilimash rather than remain in Shafak? Supposing Kilimash is similar to Shafak, which it probably is, what do I gain by the extra effort to reach it? I'll have done the thing I set out to do, is all. Fangets? Fangets. Can you listen? Kilimas. Mm. Esa. Esa vehoaka. Kilimas is the Oui. Esa vehoaka kilimas. Ah, arumi shimidati. They're over there. Mm. No, Presidente? Mr. President? President. Kilimas. Simis. Simis. <laughs> so there's no one to give my letter to. Yeah. Salama. Mateo, no, an article, this letter. This is Kitty Mas. Hey, Mas, two. And uh, the Vohaka Travaille, uh, Miasa. 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 Mm. Uh, Miasa Vohaka. Miasa Vohaka. Oui. Mm. Isao. Isao. Miasa. Eh. Alina. Alina. Bohaka. Mm. None of the words you say are in my book.
Amini Alina, Kilimasi Vohaka. Me, Lariazana Kilimasi Vahuaka Zana is lying now. Kilimasi Vahuaka Kilimasi to her. I lie now than Divahuaka to. No Vohaka. Okay. Well, it's not all I thought it would be. How about I sit in the shade? I told them the story of how, while riding the motorcycle, it fell over, onto my foot, and then my foot swelled up to twice its normal size, such that it was difficult to keep up with their quick pace, walking to Kilimash. I wonder if everyone shared my feeling that I'd wasted everyone's time. More likely, they gave me the benefit of the doubt, and assumed that I must have a good reason for dragging them to a dead village. Maybe I'm a scientist. Maybe I'm meeting someone. I think when we speculate about strangers, we invariably ascribe to them a purpose, where none may exist. For example, imagine that an alien appeared on Earth. We would assume that it was here for study, or conquest, or some design. Whether we comprehend it or not, it must have some purpose. The last thing that would occur to us, but something that we should consider, is that it's just dicking around. Maybe Shifa, because no Vahuaka in Kilimas. Tiao Vahuak. We. Tiao Vahuak in Kilimas. We. And Rano Sirang. But Vahuaka in Sivak. Vahuaka. Tua Vahuaka. Tiao. In Sivak. We. So maybe we should just go to Sivak. Shifa. Go to Sivak. Get some cafe. <laughs> so Rano yeah. and when there's Rano the Huaka. Yeah, oui, 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 oui. <laughs> My own water supply ran out on the walk to Kilimash, and it really worried me because I realized I'd have to start drinking theirs. Generally I tried to limit myself to coffee because it was boiled or to discreetly drop a purification tablet in whatever I was given. But sometimes I found it too difficult to do discreetly, and I drank anyway. See, the map didn't say anything to me about Rano. <laughs> yes. Yes. Mate. Uh, <laughs> for quoi? Hmm? Why? Mamono. Si mamono for han. So. Sua. Sua. the hair off. Hella. Eat it. Put this in my mouth. What is it? It's the liver, isn't it? Here you come. They're not 
happy about this. <laughs> it was a pleasant way to pass the time, sitting in the shade, talking without urgency. Fotofin. Majonga. Majonga. Ivosi. Ivosh. Fien Ransoa. Ansirab. Ansiradbe. Murumba. Murumbe. Oui. Yeah. Yeah. Murumbe. So you've gone to Etzeta. Ah, yeah, Etzeta. Etzeta. Mendeha. Etzeta. But it was frustrating because I understood so little. Etzeta. You. You've gone to Etzeta. So many simple ideas we couldn't communicate. I said, walk a Jada, but did I mean, have you walked to a Jada? Or, can I walk to a Jada? Or, I will walk to a Jada? How many times have I asked a question and heard the utterly neutral response? Mm. I think this gives some insight into the disarray of American foreign policy. This is a photo And this is in whatever that is. Occasionally I saw women pass with buckets of water on their heads, so I asked Javian to show me the well, partly out of curiosity to know how the village functioned. You got there, log? <laughs> partly from a desire to see where my cholera was coming from. up right now. Yeah, the line of the water. Yeah, it's pretty high sometimes. Mahaliana. Good. Lavitra. Good thing you have women to carry it on their heads. him correctly, Javian had arranged for a surrette to a Jada in the morning. So I guess it was a going away party. I'm on an upside down boat on an upside down ocean with night side memories of a right side up girl on the night side of the world. I tried out some new material, but it didn't go over very well. Salsa! What? Miss Salsa. Miss Salsa. I woke up with a touch of the botulism. I hoped we could leave first thing, but the Sarette takes a long time to prepare. We didn't get going until the absolute hottest part of the day. Rano and a snack. 
Where's it going? See, I thought I would be on it. It's just till he gets up to the road. Ah. I thought I was going to get on just then. I kept bitching that we should actually ride in the cart. And finally it was halted, and I was allowed to get on. But it started again without anyone else joining me, which was a little embarrassing. Eventually, the women climbed aboard with the turkey and me. But Javier never did, instead walking the entire way, seven hours, in such an enfeebling heat that even my watch melted. You don't appreciate how far and fast you've come on a motorcycle until you return by Surrette. And over that period, I grew increasingly sick, sore, irritable, and convinced I had some combination of heat stroke and typhoid fever. And in that condition, the happy, constant, and carefree chatter of the women was absolutely galling. Until finally I utterly lost my composure and told them to leave me in peace for one goddamn minute because holy sh**, you are driving me out of my f***ing mind with a f***ing happy chatter. And thus is it ever, the difficult circumstances reveal the true nature of the tyrant. Oh, he's perfectly benevolent when all goes well, after all. How hard is it to be good-natured when everyone defers to you, accommodates you, tolerates your nonsensical requests? It's easy to dictate, but harder to listen to what people actually need, because we may find the solution doesn't include us, or that situations are more complex than we understand. Trafficking in persons is bad, but so is imposing our will on persons, wasting persons' time. My country and I have this much in common. We portray ourselves as humanists, but are betrayed by our humanness. Almost to Ajeda, we stopped and had a drink of water. Before handing me the cup, Javian started to put something in it, but I stopped him and asked him to show me what it was. Son of a bitch. You have purification tablets. <laughs> He's also. I'm fine. Save all. He'd been adding them to my water all along. I have. I had. Which on one hand meant that whatever was wrong with me was a mystery, not typhoid fever. I put them in here. And on the other meant that my underestimation of him and everything else uh, yes, I put them is total and perfect. <laughs> You've really got to wonder about the caliber of people we have representing us overseas. See the ambassador now? Yes. Yeah, Will you speak in Malagash? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Think. Will you speak in French? No. So uh, why American is that? Because <laughs> <laughs> he speaks English. Because he doesn't speak those languages. He speaks French. Right? He does. He does. I don't believe it. Yes, he does. <laughs> I've heard him. I heard him. Okay, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs>